Hello, I'm John Clothier and welcome to my workshop. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the scary sharpening system and finding out if it's as easy to use as people say. Also, we're going to find out if it's a good solution for people that are new to sharpening. So as I said, we're going to have a look at the scary sharpening system and find out whether someone like me, who's never really done sharpening before, can use it and get good results. What is the scary sharpening system? Well, if you haven't heard of it, it's basically taking something like this, which is a sheet of, they call it micro finishing film, but it's effectively sandpaper, and sticking it to something like this, which is a piece of float glass, and then using a jig like this to hold your chisel and basically sharpening it. It's not a cheap setup. The glass isn't too bad, the jig's not too bad, and the papers themselves aren't too bad. But of course, the thing is, is that these need to be replaced. And I think they need to be replaced quite often from what I understand. However, nonetheless, let's try it out and see how it works. I'm not gonna do a lot of this kind of work. I don't need to be using planes every day. I use a plane maybe every six months, maybe once a year. And I certainly haven't sharpened the ones that I've got. So I think it's a good solution for me. Now I purchased everything here, apart from the honing guide, and this second piece of glass here, I bought all of this from Woodworkers Heaven, and I'll put a link to them below. Now, I did pay for it, there's no endorsement, there's no um, deal, there's no sponsorship whatsoever. I paid for this for self out of my own money. This is from Axminster, as is this. And again, I paid for all of those myself. I bought these actually before when I was in the old shed, and it's only now that they're coming in use. But anyway, enough of that. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Well, the first thing is the glass. Now this is float glass, it's about 10 mil thick, and that basically means it's really, really flat. Technically, it's not flat, it's the same as the curvature of the earth, but for our intents and purposes, that is flat enough. It comes with some little blue pads on the bottom, which allow it to sit, give it some grip, and also it means that you can put it on a slightly uneven surface and still keep it flat. I also got this piece of leather with it, which again helps to kind of keep it all sturdy on the bench. There are the papers themselves. Now they don't talk about these papers as far as grits, but it's in microns. We start off, we've got 100 microns, to going through uh, 40, 30, uh, 15, I think that's 13, and then we go through to sort of nine, three, and one, or something like that, which is really, really fine. 100 microns is about 200 and something grit, I think, as an equivalent. I'll make sure I put it across the bottom of the screen so you can be absolutely certain because my memory isn't great on this. And the other end, with a really fine one, it actually doesn't feel like there's any grit to it at all. But I think it's around about 11,000 grit, something like that. Again, I'll put it across the bottom below, just, just here somewhere. Also, what we get is honing fluid. And this is just to lubricate, so we'll come on to that in a later. I also purchased this small roller. Now, I think I got this from Amazon, if I remember correctly. And this is just to help press on the sheets because they're sticky backed and press them onto the glass so that they're nice and flat. So the honing guide and the, the jig for it, um, these are what you put your chisel into. It just slots into it and it gives you a preset angle, which means you can replicate that angle really easily. Now, I've also got this second piece of glass here, which is a lapping plate. And the reason for that, I'll come on to properly in a bit but basically i'm going to put the 100 micron sheet on that and i'm going to use the rest of the sheets on this piece of glass now as you can see these come in a4 sheets and that means they're way too big for the glass so what i'm going to do first of all with the exception of the 100 micron is i'm going to cut them into four four strips and i'm going to stick one of each grit onto this and press it down with a roller so let's get them all cut up and let's get them pressed on. Okay, so that's all my strips cut. Now, you need to notice that these have all got on the back of them what the micron is, apart from the pink and the yellow. So it's just important to make sure that you don't get those two mixed up because you won't know which one is which, um, apart from the color, of course. So I used the scalpel and cut them into about 70 mil. Um, I just basically divided them into four. 
So now I'll be able to lay them out on the glass and hopefully, yes, there we go. So you can space them out a little bit. So something like that, okay? So let's start with this one and peel the back off, which is probably a lot easier than it sounds. I should just point out actually that um, I didn't mention before, when you get these sheets in the pack, you actually get two of each of these sheets with the exception of the 100 micron, which is still over there. We're gonna come back to that in a bit and you only get one sheet of that. But for these, you do get two. So effectively you get eight of these strips. Anyway, let's try and get this backing off. I'm not normally very successful with this. Right, and then push on with the little roller. Okay, that's the first one done. So I'll get all the others on um, now, but just before I do, I've got that one a little bit close to the edge, so hopefully that won't be a problem, but um, it's important to be quite central, I guess. Um, also, I noticed that I'm getting a few little bubbles in between, in the middle. I don't think there's really bubbles as such, um, but it's just where it's just not pressing down. I don't know if it's gonna make a lot of difference at this micron level. It probably would at this, so I'm just trying to work out a little technique of trying to do it in the middle and go in that and then going out to the edges. But anyway, let's get the rest of them put on. Okay, well that's all of the sheets stuck down. Didn't seem to matter what I did, I was still getting bubbles trapped underneath. I can still, and I can actually feel them. Um, so as far as is this easy? Well, there's the first thing that's a bit of a struggle. I did find as I was getting through it, I was getting better at it. And there's certainly less bubbles in these two than there are certainly up here. Um, but because I can feel it, I am concerned that that may mean that it's not going to work as well as it would. However, as I said, this is a trying to see if it's easy for the beginner or someone that's new to sharpening. And is it as easy as it seems? Well, there's your first thing. No, that's not as easy as it looks. Right, I'm gonna put this to one side now, and we're gonna go over to the 100 grit um, micron paper, which we talked about before. So to start with, um, I've got a different sheet of glass here. This is the Veritas one that I got from Axminster. It's not as thick, but I believe it is still float glass, so it's still flat. Because it's got no rubber pads or anything, I've just put it on these four bench cookies. Now what the instructions say with the 100 micron is put the whole sheet on the piece of glass. Now it actually suggests putting it on the back of the sheet that we've already got. I don't want to do that, I want to keep this separate and that's because I also want to use this at some stage for flattening the bottom of planes. But it says to put the whole sheet on, so let's do that. Right, well I actually found that a lot easier for some reason. Maybe it's because the sheet was bigger, I don't know, but I've got no real bubbles in that. Maybe it's a bit stiffer, who knows. Anyway, the reason why we put this on a different sheet is because the 100 grit isn't really used for sharpening. It's used to sort of help put, I keep saying 100 grit, I mean 100 micron. What it's really used for is for putting the shape on in the first place. Now, this chisel here, which is the one that I'm going to use in this exercise, is fresh-ish out of the packet. Now it's been used, it's been used to put a couple of bits of the, I think I'll put, put the lock on the door of the shed actually but it's still fresh as far as sharpening is concerned. I've done nothing with it apart from take it out of the packet. I don't know if it will show up on the camera, but you can still see the grinding marks from when it was sharpened on a grinding wheel. The first thing you wanna do, well, at least the two things you want to do when you're sharpening, is you wanna put a nice polished edge on here and a nice polished edge on here. And the two polished edges coming together is what makes it sharp. So then what we do, first of all, is we do the back and get the back done on here before then putting a micro bevel on this edge on the other one. I hope that made sense. Did it make sense? It's supposed to be easy. Let's give it a shot. So the first thing we're going to do 
you're going to take this liquid and it's called a Honrite number one and it's basically like a, a fluid that used to help lubricate but it also helps all of the the muck that comes off to kind of like from getting stuck into the into the papers so let's put a little bit of that on again i've no idea how much it just said apply so i've put some in this area here which is the bit that i'm going to be using then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the chisel and you start by putting the heel at the back and resting that and then lean forward don't come in like that because you'll either wreck the chisel or wreck the paper start at the back tip forward and then draw it backwards and what we're looking for is the edges to start to become shiny not getting that at the moment so i'm going to keep going Right, well, at least in the top kind of two inches, maybe inch and a half, I can't see any of the radial lines from the grinding. Um, so that must be done as far as it can. So I need to move on to the other grits. But one thing I do notice is I can feel the ridge on the sandpaper already, or the polishing paper, of where I was going over it and over it and over it. So that does go to show that these papers may not last that long. So, but anyway, let's put this to one side. So now all we need to do is just go down through each of the grits and just do a few strokes. We don't need to do lots because we did most of the bulk work with the 100 micron. So let's get some of this honing fluid on again. Same again, put the heel down first and then push into it. All right, so we're doing 10 strokes and I'm wiping off in between each grit just to make sure that if there's any, if anything of the grit does come away with it, it doesn't transfer to the next one. Right, well that's the bottom of that polished and it is nice and shiny actually. It's amazing how um, just a little dab with your finger and your fingerprint gets left behind and makes the whole thing look really messy. So let's move on to the jig because we need to do the other side now. Now I'm going to talk a little bit in depth about this jig because it was a bit complicated when I first took it out of the box. I couldn't quite work out what all the different bits were for and what all the adjustment was all about, but I think I've got my head around it now and actually it kind of makes sense. So the way that this works is you clamp your chisel or your blade into here and then because of the roller here, it keeps it at a set angle while you draw it across. And that's great, but how do you set it up? Well, the first thing you want to do is to make sure that at the bottom this little arrow is pointing up. That's the default position. This is used for adjusting the angle away from the calibrated mark. Now these are all the calibrated marks. So for example, I've got mine set at 25 degrees. With this up, it's at 25 degrees. If I move it down, because this is an offset, that's you will adjust the, the angle from 25 degrees. But I want it at 25 for now, so let's leave it as it is. The next thing to look at is this scale and as you can see it's got red yellow and green depending on which of the numbers you want so if you want for example on this one you want a 20 30 or 40 depending on the color you need to adjust here so what we've got here is that i'm in yellow so i'm on setting number two and this is for your sort of standard angles at the moment it's set as 25 degrees that is a standard measurement for chisels is 25 degrees so I'm going to leave it at 25 that's locked into place what we now do is just loosen off this end and there's a little tiny sort of dovetail here and this just slides on I'm just loosely nipping it up just so it doesn't fall off what you want to do then is look at your chisel and mine is 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch so you want to find on this scale where three quarters of an inch is. And at the moment, that's pointing to one inch. So I need to slide it across just a little bit. So that's probably half an inch, so that'll be there. Right, so that's now locked at one and three quarter, sorry, at three quarters of an inch. The next thing is just to make sure that this bottom section is parallel. You don't want it at an angle, it won't grip properly. So what we can now do is slide the chisel in, 
make sure it stays in contact with this fence and push it up to that locator. And once it's there, a little bit of a tighten up. Double check to make sure it's square, which mine isn't. So I'm just gonna adjust it until it is. And you adjust it by loosening one and then tightening the other one. And that should keep everything in place. Okay, so now we're set here, we can remove this. We don't need this anymore. And we're now set, well, in this case, at 25 degrees. All right, let's go back to the sanding, polishing, sharpening. So what we're gonna do this time is turn it around. And that's because when we position it on here, we can only draw back so far because of the wheel. We don't want the wheel to fall off the edge. So I might as well reuse the same piece of sandpaper. So anyway, principle here is thumbs behind the back, press down on the edge of the blade and pull backwards. Having just looked at the instructions again, I should be on the 100 micron, not on the 40. So I'm just gonna go onto the 100, just give it a couple of strokes, just to make sure that we're nice and flat and that it's set at 25 degrees. Right, now that that's done, what we're actually gonna do is put a secondary bevel on the chisel. And for that, I'm gonna do that at 30 degrees. So I'm gonna take my little calibration thing. So I'm gonna take my little calibration, undo it from 25 and move it along to 30. Make sure it's located in the hole, which it is. Now I'm gonna to need to remove the chisel again. Set this back up at 30. Right, so now we've got set to 30, we can put the secondary bevel on by starting at this end and working our way along. Okay, so that should be sharp. My understanding is that there will now be a um, burr on the back side of here. So what we want to do is we want to move to the nine micron. No, we don't. We want to move to the to the lowest, which is the green. And you want to start off the paper and just pull it across. And apparently that will be sharp. Now I know a test that people often use is to see whether it will cut the hair on your arm. Well, let's give it a shot. Well, that's pretty conclusive. Right, my next test is with this scrap piece of paper to see if I can cut it. Yeah, well that's just, <laughs> that, that is pretty sharp. Um, just pressing down on the paper is enough to push it through. So hopefully you can see that we've got the main 25 and then it's just a sliver of light. I don't know if that'll pick up on the camera. And you should be able to see that that little slither of light is the sharp 30 degrees. And that is what gives us our sharpness. So that is pretty sharp. So what do I think? Um, well, <laughs> I can cut my arm here. I mean, look at that. That means it's sharp. Sharper than anything else that I've ever sharpened before. So yeah, is it okay for beginners? Yeah, I would say so. Um, is it easy to use? When you get into the sort of swing of it, it kind of is. I think kind of getting set up, um, certainly putting the, the sheets down without getting bubbles was a bit tricky, but and also getting it set up in the guide is a little bit tricky. Um, but it seems to work. So yeah, I guess I would say that it's as easy as it, as it appears. Um, my line's not dead straight. I don't know if that's the chisels or, the, or one of the tools or my technique. Um, it looks fairly straight uh, though, where it's been meeting in contact. So I guess that's okay. Um, the acid test really is gonna be in using it. Now, I don't have a need to use these at the moment. This is just getting ready for the guitar build. So I'm gonna get them all sharpened up and see how they get on when I'm on the next project. Anyway, I'll leave that there. Um, so I'll put links to the, where I got all this stuff from in the description below. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. 
Thank you for watching. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. We've got loads of cool stuff coming up. More of this kind of stuff. We're looking at jigs. We're going to be looking at some tooling. Um, we're going to be making some tools and jigs. And we're going to be making the electric guitar. So stick around and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.